Okay, so today we are going to talk about hypokalemia. We'll discuss that what is hypokalemia, what is the presentation of hypokalemia and what are the causes of it. We'll discuss that how do you treat hypokalemia step by step. First of all, body maintains potassium within a strict normal range. Ranging from 3.5 to 5.2 milli equivalent per liter is the normal range of potassium levels in the blood. Potassium is a very important component for all the biochemical functions in the body. Hypokalemia is considered when the potassium levels fall below 3.5 milli equivalent. And we have three categories of hypokalemia, mild, moderate, severe. In mild hypokalemia, the potassium levels are from 3 to 3.4 milli equivalent per liter. In moderate hypokalemia, potassium levels are between 2.5 to 2.9 milli equivalent per liter. And in severe hypokalemia, the potassium levels fall below 2.5 milli equivalent per liter. So that is how we categorize hypokalemia. Coming to hyperkalemia, in hyperkalemia, potassium levels are above 5.5 milli equivalent per liter. I have talked about hyperkalemia management in detail in my video on hyperkalemia emergency treatment. You can check out the video in the link given in the description below. Coming to the causes of hypokalemia, hypokalemia causes can be remembered by a simple mnemonic ditch potassium resulting in hypokalemia. D for drugs like loop diuretic laxatives they cause loss of potassium. Intake is decreased. Many patients who are in surgical world are nil per oral. They are not taking food through mouth. Therefore, they develop hypokalemia due to dietary deficiency. Many patients of ICU go into hypokalemia and you would see them managing hypokalemia many times. Tube like nasogastric tube suction causes hypokalemia. Cushing syndrome, excess steroid causes hypokalemia due to the mineralocorticoid function of steroid which causes loss of potassium. Cohn syndrome in which there is hyperaldosteronism, hyperaldosteronism causes loss of potassium in urine. Heavy fluid loss in vomiting, diarrhea causes loss of electrolytes and loss of potassium. Therefore, ditch potassium. Many times you would see hypokalemia associated with alkalosis because hydrogen and potassium are lost together in urine. But if you see hypokalemia with acidosis, suspect renal tubular acidosis in this case. There are many causes of hypokalemia with acidosis, but I have listed an important one here. Coming to the presentation of hypokalemia, hypokalemia presents with muscle weakness. Most of the symptoms involve muscle weakness, muscle breakdown, rhabdomyolysis, elevated CPK levels in some cases. You would see hyporeflexia, hyporeflexia because the muscles are not working properly. This is because potassium is a very important component in the physiology of muscle contraction. Patient would complain of cramps and in heart, remember, it causes tachycardia due to increased excitability and there is also risk of arrhythmia associated with hypokalemia and tachycardia. In GIT, you would see constipation, slowed gut motility. Coming to the investigations in hypokalemia, investigations in hypokalemia include first and the foremost serum electrolytes in which you diagnose hypokalemia. Then urinary electrolytes are also important. Urinary electrolytes hint you toward the diagnosis. If the potassium in urine is elevated, it means that renal loss is the cause of hypokalemia. It can occur due to diuretics. It can occur due to renal tubular acidosis. It can occur due to Kittelman's and Barter syndrome. And if the potassium in urine is low or normal, then it means that it's not the kidney that is losing potassium. It's something else that is causing loss of potassium. Extra renal causes include laxative, diarrhea, vomiting. So these are all the causes of extra renal losses. So the urinary electrolytes will hint you toward the cause of hypokalemia. Blood pressure, you check the blood pressure hypokalemia with hypertension is seen in the patients with hyperaldosteronism, the patients with high aldosterone levels like the patients with Cohn syndrome. Coming to the treatment of hypokalemia. Treatment of hypokalemia involves treating the underlying cause. Look for the cause of hypokalemia. 
first of all review the medications that that patient is taking mostly the patients are on some pathomimetic beta 2 agonist drugs beta 2 agonist drugs drive potassium into the cells therefore lowering down the potassium in the blood resulting in hypokalemia look for any laxative use that is causing loss of potassium look for diuretic induced hypokalemia diuretics like loop diuretics thiazide diuretic they cause loss of potassium and if the patient is having vomiting you must rehydrate that patient with the normal saline and vomiting can cause loss of potassium then check and replace magnesium levels always check magnesium levels in patients with hypokalemia because magnesium deficiency impairs the sodium potassium atpase and it causes loss of potassium in urine and in gi tract so if the patient is having a hypomagnesemia you must correct it if the patient is having hypomagnesemia low magnesium levels and you are trying to replace potassium those potassium will be again lost in the urine or gi gi tract and the patient will develop a hypokalemia again how do you treat hypomagnesemia if the magnesium level is less than 2 milli equivalent per liter then you give iv magnesium sulfate 1 to 2 g in 100 ml normal saline over 20 minutes oral magnesium sulfate tablets are also available 400 mg they can be given in od or bd dosage but they have a problem that they cause diarrhea and most patients cannot tolerate these medication you treat the underlying cause you check and replace the magnesium level then you replace the potassium levels then you see that what is the range of potassium if a patient is having severe hypokalemia severe hypokalemia with potassium levels less than 2.5 milli equivalent per liter that needs rapid iv potassium replacement and rapid iv potassium replacement cannot be done through peripheral line because potassium is venous irritant so you have to do iv potassium replacement in severe hypokalemia through central line and preferably it must be done in icu with cardiac monitoring in central line what you can do is that you can give 40 milli equivalent per liter per hour of potassium in peripheral lines you cannot give 40 milli equivalent per hour you cannot give so much potassium in the peripheral line because it is a venous irritant but in a central line you can give rapid potassium replacement if the potassium levels are severely low less than 2.5 milli equivalent commonly available ampules of potassium that we have in our hospital or of 10 ml each 10 ml ampule of potassium chloride contains 20 milli equivalent of potassium now these ampules of potassium are diluted in normal saline and are given at a rate that only 40 milli equivalent of potassium gets inside the body every hour through a central line and you check potassium levels till the time potassium levels are about 2.5 milli equivalent you replace potassium at this rate or until the symptoms resolve remember while you are giving potassium you must have continuous ecg monitoring because hypokalemia or hyperkalemia can induce ecg changes and it must be done under ecg monitoring potassium levels must be checked every 2 to 4 hours what are the ecg changes that you would see in hypokalemia ecg changes seen in hypokalemia include u waves these are the u waves that appear when patient is in hypokalemia and st segment depression can also be seen but these u waves are the classical feature of hypokalemia so if a patient is having severe hypokalemia you replace the potassium through a central line at a fast rate under the ecg monitoring and with that you also give oral replacement oral supplement of potassium as well od or bd but what if the patient is having moderate hypokalemia potassium levels between 2.5 to 2.9 milli equivalent per liter in such case you have to see whether patient is symptomatic or not symptomatic means that patient is developing cardiac arrhythmias patient is developing tachycardia and ecg changes such symptomatic patients need rapid replacement of potassium through a central line under ecg monitoring as we discussed and if the patient is not symptomatic that patient can receive oral replacement 
replacement of potassium with oral replacement you can go for iv potassium replacement in such case but through a peripheral line central line is not necessary because you can give slow potassium replacement through a peripheral line without developing any toxic effects through peripheral line 10 milli equivalent per liter iv per hour is given meaning that in one hour 10 milli equivalent of potassium goes inside the body those ampules of potassium are diluted in normal saline and they are set at a rate that only 10 milli equivalent of potassium goes in the body until we reach our goal or the patient can take oral regimen oral supplements of potassium you check serum potassium 4 to 12 hourly If the patient has mild hypokalemia with potassium levels ranging from 3 to 3.4 milli equivalent per liter in such case you give oral replacement of potassium because oral replacement of potassium is enough and then you need to see whether that patient has metabolic acidosis or not if the patient is having metabolic acidosis then you need to give oral potassium bicarb because potassium will replace the potassium levels and bicarb will correct the metabolic acidosis so you are killing two birds with the same stone one drug is treating two conditions 25 milli equivalent of potassium bicarb is given per orally every 6 to 12 hourly and if the patient is not having metabolic acidosis then you can give oral potassium chloride supplements 10 to 12 milli equivalent orally once daily or twice daily so this is how we replace potassium An important thing to remember is that you should not give potassium if the patient is oliguric. If the patient is not producing urine, that patient will accumulate potassium in his body and he won't be able to excrete excess potassium, and that will lead to hyperkalemia. And never give potassium as a first stat bolus because that is how government execute people who get a death penalty in jail. People with hypokalemia must be recommended high potassium diets. High potassium diet include banana, coconut. water green leafy vegetables and fruits in summary we talked about the levels of potassium and hypokalemia we talked about the causes signs and symptoms of hypokalemia investigations in which urinary electrolytes are important reviewing the underlying causes correcting magnesium in severe hypokalemia central line fast rate in moderate hypokalemia iv peripheral line slow rate and in mild hypokalemia you give oral replacement of potassium some important points diets with increased potassium if you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my video on hyperkalemia emergency treatment and other videos on emergency medicine the link of those videos is given in the description below thank you very much